appreciate everyone being here today. Um, it's a very uh, uh, serious matter that we're, we're here to discuss, and I too want to extend my appreciation and uh, a warm welcome to all of our panelists today. Um, all of us, it's a sheer American value that we just want our men and women to keep us safe, our first responders, and of course, men and women in uniform, and our armed forces just in the highest regard. So, thank you for your service to our communities and for, for joining us here today. I want to thank uh, Elijah for arranging today's panel, and also uh, Carolyn uh, Maloney for uh, thank you for introducing the bill. It's, a, it's good legislation, and I'm proud to stand with you on that. I, uh, I start out with this basic premise of my public service that when we find common ground, uh, and which it's not easy to find, but when we do find it, uh, we need to, 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 to elevate it and to have the courage to, to advance it and to move it forward. And I really believe that this legislation and this topic today, addressing it, is indeed common ground. Um, you know, the pain that uh, so many families are experiencing today because of straw purchasing and no trafficking, um, some of it is more recent, we know these events, but let me take you back for just a moment. Almost 25 years ago, in our region, in the Hampton Roads region of Virginia, um, a tragedy occurred there as well, and as a direct result of the straw purchase, a 16-year-old uh, had access to a gun. It was given to him. In fact, uh, the, the, the student, he was 16 years old, he picked the gun out at the gun store with the adult, the adult purchased the gun for the express intent to give it to the juvenile. Later, the juvenile um, used that gun to kill a teacher and to wound another. And but for his access to the gun, he could uh, uh, easily conclude that that horrible tragedy would not have occurred. So, um, in some ways, sadly, this is not a new phenomenon that, uh, that, that strong purchasers are harming our country and our communities, and I think it's maybe important just for a bit of context, and I'll be concise so that we can hear from the panelists and, and my colleagues here, is that um, I'm a lifetime member of the NRA. Um, I own um, some of the firearms that some describe as assault weapons, and to be uh, direct on this matter, there's much that we don't have in common um, on some of these areas, the more the difficult ones that uh, might be uh, discussed and then be debated within this House and in the Senate. But uh, I really like the approach that uh, Elijah and others have taken, and I try to have the same approach, which is this: let's start out, let's look for some common ground. And I, I had the privilege of standing next to Elijah uh, for a couple of days of media appearances, and he, because he's a senior member, he'd always go first. That's how this place works. But uh, he'd always start out with something like, look, we're going we're gonna to start out with what kind of, com what, where is the common ground? This is common sense, and, and I'm really proud to be here today. I'm proud to, uh, to hear uh, the testimony to stand with, uh, with our colleagues here to advance a good piece of legislation. So I thank you all uh, for being here. I look forward to, uh, to hearing what you have to share with us today, and hopefully this will lead to safer communities and uh, at the same time, these are not mutually exclusive goals, the full uh, protection of our Second Amendment rights. So again, thank you so much. <laughs> 